So here we are at the connection of these two arches. And there was a drain down there. But what I've done, because I don't want it to potentially block up with ice, is I poured mortar in. And next up, I'm going to fill it all the way up with aircrete. And then I'll mortar over the top so that there's no space in there. And then probably do that in the next one next. But getting a shot beforehand. I'm going to get this station all set up. And I'm guessing it'll take three batches to get that up the first time. And then probably two more. We'll see. So this first batch ended up really thick and didn't fill up as much as usual, but I'm just going to go with it and uh, got that area all wetted and here's our bore. I probably should not have bored it like that in all honesty. I should have done it much gentler. But nothing came out on that side. Just water coming out, but I had mortar down in the valley, but it wasn't cured, so the way I poured it, I probably disturbed it a bit. I should just pour it out on the side and let it go in more gentle, but that is batch one. It's gonna take several more to fill this thing. So this is gonna be my second pour for today, and it's gonna be the last one for today due to power constraints. It's not, uh, building nearly as much volume similar to the last batch but and I'm nearly as much volume as usual and I think that's because of the temperature I think that's affecting how much foam the thing makes so I probably need to add more foam if I want it to foam more at this temperature but here's the second pour in here and hopefully there won't be too much rain so that I can finish it tomorrow And because these are so thick, it'll probably be good to have them near the bottom for added structural integrity. But they won't be as insulative, so the next ones on top will be more insulative. So that's all for now. So here it's the following morning. And this seems like it did not slump very much at all. So it was that thicker batch. And uh, so that's good. That's pretty much solidified so looking to fill that up so here here's an interesting sign so I just mixed all this up and see how it's bubbling I think the reason that that happened is because when I first put the mix of the soap in before before it was all foaming some of it was just just the liquid and so the the soapy liquid that wasn't all pre-foamed got in there and that's what bubbles are bursting and so as those bubbles burst they interact with the small bubble smaller bubbles and cause those to burst so this is probably a big reason for a lot of the slump maybe is when i mix it i'm getting the soapy water in before it all gets bubbly and uh Really, I should probably shouldn't even pour it like this. I should probably mix it first before I pour it, but I've got issues with my electrical right now, and I'm just going to pour it, so we'll see what happens. Whoa. Hopefully I cut that on the phone. That was wild. Went all the way up that, that way. So the, uh, yeah, the stuff coming out the bottom there has those bigger bubbles. So it's less settled, but those will probably end up on the top. So this one will end up with a lot of slump and I just got to figure out a better system to mix this more quickly. And I bet it'll take a full, probably three more batches at least to fill this up, especially since this first one is slumping so bad. So it's not a good start to the day, but that's that. Okay, here's batch number two. Got the power situation all figured out by Straddling to a different power bank. Oh. And I'll try not to be so splashy with it this time. Oh. 
I'm just seeing the different colors between them. And I think that's probably best. The gentler it is, the better. Right, the other one's not popping. So I'm thinking two more before I get this near the top. All right, here's batch number three. It's pretty full. And I'm kind of planting that so that up top it's a little bit lighter. So hopefully it won't oh, mix in as much with the other stuff. Oops. So every time I add more, it destabilizes the old one. But I'm going to try to do one last one as fast as I can. A really light one to go on top and... Hopefully that'll uh, be good enough for today. Okay, here's the next one. So, pretty close to the top. I think I'm going to leave it there. I really should do one more. I'm going to do one more. Okay, ready for the final, final pour for today. Let me try to angle it a little. And uh, it should be enough to get it high enough where water won't collect there. So I'll scrape it all out and get one more shot. So here's how it ended up after the last one. I'm really glad I did that last batch. And I'm just going to try to cover it from the sun and hopefully it doesn't slump too much. But I'll uh, check back in and uh, probably at the end of the day. Alright, here we are at the end of the day. You can really see how much it slumped. Maybe a little bit less than I expected actually. So tomorrow... When it's hard enough, I'll probably just do one more batch to fill in that slump zone. And then this area will be complete. The only problem is it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I might have to figure something else out. And if I have to, because it doesn't actually slump all that much in the middle, I can always just add some lath, maybe a little filler of some sort and then just mortar over it, which is what I might have to do for the weather. But as long as the water sheds to the next arch, then it'll be all good. So I got the first bucket down underneath the lath to fill in all the cracks. Bent the edge of the lath for added structural support. The lath gives the concrete tensile strength. Concrete has excellent Compression strength, but not very good compression strength. Uh, excellent compression, not very good tensile. The metal gives it the tensile strength. So, now I'm going to come in with the rest of the mortar. Cover as much of the lath as possible. Every the, All these objects are just to keep the lath in contour with the structure underneath. So the first, then the rest of this batch will be covering all basically around where those objects are and then once that hardens the objects can be removed and then the final um, holes can be patched so uh, I'll get one more shot after I do all the mortar or the rest of this batch so here we are after almost a full batch got a half bucket left so just for reference a batch of mortar is a half bag of Portland three buckets of sand and then water with a little bit of fibers mixed in there. So the first bucket went underneath, then there was about two, two buckets on top, and a uh, half bucket left. That's all I'll add for now. So I'll just put this other half bucket somewhere else, wait for all this to dry. It's supposed to rain, that was one of the reasons I wanted to put it in. There's still a, there's a low point right around where that tire is, and I can't quite fill it until I add more mortar, but um, basically as long as I cover this from the rain it should be all good to cure even if it gets rainy. And uh, I'll check back in when I'm ready to continue this. Here's how we're looking after the rain. I had stuff over it, but we've got a little bit of, little bit of pooling there. 
So I'm about to do the second batch of mortar and get the rest of this covered and then make sure it's all uh, fix the pooling and then it'll all shed and it'll be all set as far as the water drainage and then I'll just need another couple of batches just to get that back that back lath all aligned properly but I'll check back in after the mortar's ready so after that batch we've got it level so that it'll shed water so uh, it's higher over there, and then it'll come down and shed water down into that next arch, which I still have to figure out if I'm going to do the same procedure with the next arch or not, but it makes this whole space usable. And uh, it's not finished, and you can see how in the middle there, if you look real close, the depth of the mortar was most in the middle. You can see on the sidewall of the lath how it is basically completely submerged there. And it goes high over here. And I actually put another little piece of lath in there. And somewhere in the middle there's a double double layer lath which gives it extra, extra strong tensile strength. So it's not a finished coat but it'll be safe for the rain. And I'll do one more at some point once the uh, once that cures. And, I'll probably leave it there for this video. So here's how it looks the following morning. There's no water building up and it's all shutting down into the next valley. So I gotta figure out whether or not to fill this one, which would cause it to go into the corner, the corner drain, which has an access point at the bottom, so I might keep the corner one. Might keep this one too, I haven't decided yet. But it's really good to have that one filled because it'll give added structural integrity to connect the gate tower structure to the new entry hall structure. So there's a little bit more to do to take that rock out and then form the lath to the wall and then get that reinforcement. But here is how it, uh, here's how it looks now from the low point looking up. And then it goes right down from here, down there. Hey, little. That's all. Okay, so I did the final batch of mortar yesterday to cover up the the vertical part of the lathe up against the wall, and it all shed down to the the next one. So this. This arch is officially completed, project complete.